The Life and Sad Ending of Frederick March Frederick March was born August 31st, 1897, in Racine, Wisconsin, the son of Cora Brown Marcher, a schoolteacher from England, and John F. Bickle, a devout Presbyterian church elder who worked in the wholesale hardware business. March attended the Winslow Elementary School, established in 1855, Racine High School, and the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where he was a member of Alpha Delta Phi. March served in the United States Army during World War I as an artillery lieutenant. He began a career as a banker, but an emergency appendectomy caused him to reevaluate his life, and in 1920, he began working as an extra in movies made in New York City. Using a shortened form of his mother's maiden name, he appeared on Broadway in 1926, and by the end of the decade, he signed a film contract with Paramount Pictures. He received an Oscar nomination for the fourth Academy Awards in 1930 for The Royal Family of Broadway, in which he played a role modeled on John Barrymore. He won the Academy Award for Best Actor in the fifth Academy Awards in 1932 for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. This led to roles in a series of classic films based on stage hits and classic novels like Design for Living in 1933 with Gary Cooper and Miriam Hopkins. Death Takes a Holiday, 1934, Les Miserables in 1935 with Charles Lawton, Anna Karenina, 1935 with Greta Garbo, Anthony Adverse, 1936 with Olivia de Havilland, and as the original Norman Maine in A Star is Born in 1937 with Janet Gaynor, for which he received his third Academy Award nomination. March resisted signing long-term contracts with the studios, enabling him to play roles in films from a variety of them. He returned to Broadway after a 10-year absence in 1937 with a notable flop, Your Obedient Husband. But after the success of Thornton Wilder's The Skin of Your Teeth, he focused as much on Broadway as on Hollywood. He won two Best Actor Tony Awards in 1947 for the play Years Ago, written by Ruth Gordon, and in 1957 for his performance as James Tyrone in the original Broadway production of Eugene O'Neill's Long Day's Journey Into Night. He also had major successes in A Bell for Adano in 1944 and Gideon in 1961, and played Ibsen's An Enemy of the People on Broadway in 1951. During this period, he also starred in films including I Married a Witch in 1942 and Another Part of the Forest in 1948, and won his second Oscar in 1946 for The Best Years of Our Lives. March also branched out into television, winning Emmy nominations for his third attempt at the royal family for the series The Best of Broadway, as well as for television performances as Samuel Dodsworth and Ebenezer Scrooge. On March 25, 1954, March co-hosted the 26th Annual Academy Award Ceremony from New York City with co-host Donald O'Connor in Los Angeles. In 1957, March was awarded the George Eastman Award, given by George Eastman House for a distinguished contribution to the art of film. In February 12, 1959, March appeared before a joint session of the 86th U.S. Congress, reading the Gettysburg Address as part of a commemoration of the 150th anniversary of Abraham Lincoln's birth. March co-starred with Spencer Tracy in the 1960 Stanley Kramer film Inherit the Wind, in which he played a dramatized version of famous orator and political figure William Jennings Bryan. March's Bible-thumping character provided a rival for Tracy's Clarence Darrow-inspired character. In the 1960s, March's film career continued with a performance as President Jordan Lyman in the political thriller Seven Days in May in 1964, in which he co-starred with Burt Lancaster, Kirk Douglas, and Edmund O'Brien. The part earned March a Golden Globe nomination as Best Actor. March made several spoken word recordings, including a version of Oscar Wilde's The Selfish Giant, in, issued in 1945, in which he narrated 
and play the title role. And The Sounds of History, a 12-volume LP set accompanying the 12-volume set of books in The Life History of the United States, published by Time Life. Following surgery for prostate cancer in 1970, it seemed his career was over. Yet, he managed to give one last performance in The Iceman Cometh in 1973, as the complicated Irish saloon keeper Harry Hope. March was married to actress Florence Eldridge from 1927 until his death in 1975, and they had adopted two children. He had died from prostate cancer at age 77, in Los Angeles and was buried at his estate in New Milford, Connecticut. March has a star for motion pictures on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 1620 Vine Street.